Okay, we need to talk because I saw a movie this weekend by the name of Eli on Netflix. Uh, my girlfriend and I watched it and I was thinking about reviewing In the Tall Grass this week, but after seeing this movie, we need to talk about this movie because woof. <laughs> However, the thing about this movie is it's very M. Night Shyamalan-esque in the sense that there is an epic plot twist in the third act that totally changes everything. And I feel like it's impossible to talk about this movie without addressing the things wrong with this epic plot twist. So what I've decided to do is I'm going to do a spoiler-free version at the beginning, and then... Once I give you my score for the movie, i.e. how many hats out of four, once that score has been laid down, we will get into spoiler country and you will have an opportunity to quit the movie review and possibly watch the movie for yourself if you feel like subjecting yourself to it. So that's the situation. Are we up to speed? Okay, let's go. My God, this movie. You know, sometimes a plot twist can take a pretty good movie and just kill it. Just outright stab it in the face and leave it dead on the ground. You know, it's hard to believe how a really good movie with a lot of good buildup can be ruined by one twist. And that's basically Eli right there. So Eli is basically about, well, Eli, a 10-year-old kid who suffers from an autoimmune deficiency who that basically causes him to go into coughing fits if he's exposed to things like dust or water or even air. He has to wear this little bubble suit and it's pretty it's pretty much hell on earth for this kid, you know. His parents discover this like clinic, I guess, for lack of a better term, that boasts a 100% success rate for treating kids with Eli's condition, successfully curing them, in fact. So the parents take Eli to see this doctor and hope that this doctor knows what she's talking about and can cure him. Unfortunately, the longer Eli stays in this house and the longer he stays with the doctor, the more it becomes very clear that things aren't what they seem. This doctor might actually be a quack. I generally like to start with positives, and I gotta say, like I said in the beginning, this movie actually started out okay. I mean, yeah, my girlfriend and I were giving it the Mystery Science Theater treatment from start to basically the second act, but, you know, that's just how we watch movies. You know, that doesn't mean the movie's bad, it just means we're having fun. But, you know, take away the Mystery Science Theater commentary, and this movie was actually not the worst movie I'd ever seen, you know? This isn't a spoiler, but it did have the, uh, you know, one-dimensional Stephen King-esque bully because bully kind of dudes at the very beginning, you know, very standard trailer trash who are all making fun of Eli, and they sick their Rottweiler on him because they're dicks. That's what they do. They hang out at the trailer park and... Got their little Budweiser or PBR or whatever in their hand, you know. <laughs> you're different from us, boy. Well, that means you're stupid. <laughs> we gonna make fun of you and we gonna kill you with our dog. <laughs> Aside from, like, tacky moments like that, you know, I could look past little details like that. Another positive I'll say is the kid who plays Eli, he's actually pretty good, you know. He didn't feel like he was reading from a card. He didn't feel like he was hamming it up, at least no more than you would have to for a horror movie. You know, genuinely good performance, and I, I applaud him. I can't remember his name off the top of my head, unfortunately. I'm going to have to look that up when, here as soon as I'm done, but, you know, really good performance. And that's pretty much where my positivity comes to a screeching halt, because once it gets to the third act, whoo! The thing about this plot twist, though, is it's still not the worst plot twist I've seen all year. 
That honor still belongs to the perfection. And do not get me started on the perfection or else I'll forget what I'm talking about entirely and fill this video with like 30 minutes of me bitching about that movie instead. Let's stay on, let's stay on topic and talk about Eli here. I kind of feel like, in hindsight, I should have seen the plot twist to Eli coming, because they did kind of leave a couple of hints in hindsight, like they had a uh, church parable, I want to say, on the wall. It was definitely a Bible quote. Um, there was definitely kind of symbolism with certain procedures, but for the most part, that twist just came completely out of left field and ruined it. And unfortunately, that twist is why I have to give this movie one hat out of four. And now we get into the spoiler content. I'm going to give you about three seconds to get out of here, so anybody who wants to stay and enjoy the spoiler can enjoy it now. Okay? Okay, good. So now we're into spoiler talk, and the big epic twist is that Eli was actually never sick. It turns out that Eli is actually the Antichrist. And they've been keeping him in this bubble and convincing him he's sick as kind of a way of suppressing his power, I guess. But the procedure is actually not a medical procedure. I mean, it does use very expensive medical equipment like a little drill to drill holes into your head or something to take away little bits and pieces of your spinal column. But... It turns out the procedure is actually a three-step exorcism. And... What? You know, the funny thing is, I actually would have been okay with this plot twist if it turned out that Eli actually wasn't an antichrist. Like, if it turned out that Eli was actually being lied to, not just... Be you know, like... How do I put this? Okay. His parents lied to him about being sick, but if he hadn't actually been the Antichrist, like if he was still just a normal kid, and it turned out his parents were like fanatical Christian psychopaths, and the doctor was also a fanatical Christian psychopath, etc., you know, and they end up, you know, like the reason that they end up killing all these kids isn't because the procedure doesn't work, but because they're basically killing kids they believe to be the Antichrist. Somehow, that would have given this a 2 out of 4 for me. Except, no, they didn't commit to that. They decided to go the whole 9 yards, and Eli, at the very end of the movie, reveals his demon form and kills everybody, and it's like... That was basically the point where I tapped out. That was the point where it's like, okay, if you're not gonna take this seriously, I'm just gonna go home. This movie sucks! And it's a real shame, because the first couple of acts of this movie was actually really good. You know, it was legitimately scary. Speaking of somebody who's been to the hospital more than, he, more than anybody probably should between the ages of three and five, you know, it's like, I've had to go through surgeries, but unlike Eli, you know, these were pretty standard procedures where, you know, everything goes according to plan, and the odds of them fucking it up and killing you or even maiming you are like, five million to one, but try explaining that to a four-year-old. But we're not even doing that, you know? We're not doing a standard procedure with 100% success rate. We're doing something that's entirely experimental, and while it's advertised as 100% successful, I mean, that's how they advertise it. Of course they're gonna say that in the advertisement. They're not gonna actively advertise that, oh, you know, the first three patients we tried it on died in the hospital somewhere around the third procedure, but you know, we're pretty sure fourth time will be a charm, right? <laughs> so yeah, I honestly can't recommend this movie, like, at all. This movie was pretty bad, in hindsight. Oh my god. I just can't recommend this movie, at all. No way. No how. Don't subject yourself to it. It's, it's not worth it. Not even if you're looking for, like, a dumb movie. I mean, there's dumb movies, and then there's this. Just don't do it. Until next time, kids.